All right, so this video we're going to um, do the same integral um, that we did for the washer version, and this time we're actually just going to be using shells. So we're going to be using a different method of integration. I'm going to be showing you how to logically set this up. So remember last time when we did washers, we chose our infinitesimal strip um, parallel with the x-axis, which meant we were integrating with respect to y. And when we revolve the shape like that, we ended up with a washer. So if we revolve a thin strip like that around the y-axis, we would end up with a washer. And that's what last video was about, was about the washer method. But this time we're going to be using what's called cylindrical shells. And how we do that is what we do is instead of picking our infinitesimal strip um, in a direction that would create a washer when you revolved it, we're going to pick our infinitesimal strip in the opposite direction. So in this case, our infinitesimal is dx. And if we're still going to revolve around the y-axis, because I want kind of everything to be the same um, between these two problems to contrast them. Um, so if we were to revolve this thin strip around the y-axis, what, what we would end up with is we might end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Except instead of our height being dy now, now our width of this shell, so in other words you see the width of this shell is dx. And so if we're looking here at the width of this shell, it's going to be dx now. And now we're going to have to derive what the height and and the radius and that sort of thing is. So for this example, what would the radius of this um, thin um, cylindrical shell be? For example, for this place right here, for this specific um, thin strip. Well, you'll notice that the x, that wherever you choose on this f of x in between our boundaries, that it will fit where x is on this graph. So in other words, no matter where you're at, no matter where you're picking your thin strip, the radius of that thin strip is always going to be x. And that's important. It's important that what we're integrating with works at every single point within our, um, within our interval. Because if it doesn't, then the math won't work out. So our radius is x. Radius is equal to x. Now we're interested in our height. All right, so our height. So what would our height be for these different um, cylindrical shells? So we know that the the um, radius is x if we're revolving around the origin. But when we plug in x, what's our height? Well, our height is going to be modeled by the y direction of the function. So if my radius is x then my height is my output in my function. And so that means that my height is equal to y or equal to f of x, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what is the infinitesimal volume, our little volume chunk, which is what we have drawn here. Um, what is that equal to? And so you may notice that um, that this thin ring, we, we could almost approximate it by saying that it is so thin that we could just call it a circumference, right? And so a circumference is going to be equal to 2 pi r. So that gives us our circumference of this thing. And then let's go ahead and times that circumference by the height. So we're going to extrude that circumference down by timesing it by our height. But then there's like a little fudge factor, right? Because this thing, this isn't quite the, uh, the circumference. I mean, there's a little bit of width there. It's width dx. Um, but the beautiful thing is because this thing is infinitesimally small, we can use this sort of an approximation and the answer will still come out what we would consider to be exact. So we just need to multiply this whole thing by its little bit of, of uh, thickness there. So by our dx. So this is the standard kind of model for what we're going to do here with the cylindrical shells. Let's go ahead and plug in what we know everything represents. So dv equals 2 pi 
we know that r is equal to x for every point on our graph. And we know that h is equal to y for every point on our graph. And then dx is just dx. Well, now we're going to go ahead and throw up our integral. The integral of 1 with respect to dv is just v. So that's the volume we're looking for. We are taking an infinite sum of all of these concentric shells that are like stacked in on each other, right? Kind of like Russian nesting dolls. And so we're finding our entire volume by integrating. Um, and because we're integrating with respect to x, we want everything in our integral to be in terms of x. So the y is not really acceptable for us. But we know that y equals x squared, so we can do that substitution. If y equals x squared, x squared times x is x cubed, so we can do that substitution. So now what we have is we have 2 pi x cubed dx. This looks like an integral we can do. Then the last step is what is our interval? And what's nice about it this time is that because we chose we chose our um, the area, the direction in which we were going to use our infinitesimal, which was x in this case, and they already gave us the, the parameters for x. The lower bound is x equals 0, and the upper bound is x equals 5. And so, just like last video, I'm going to end it right here and say, this is, this is the equation that comes out of this process. Um, this is not a difficult integral to do, it's just a, uh, you're doing the power rule in reverse. And so, um, what's really important is to know how to visualize this stuff. Um, to me, it's just really, really fascinating. So hopefully, hopefully you find it uh, fascinating as well. And I'll see you next video.